Hey y'all, welcome to the No Guilt Fangirls podcast. I'm your host and head fangirl in charge, Patty Holiday, and this is the Daily-ish Fangirl segment called Now Streaming Disney Plus, I think. We think. What say you, Andrea? Is this official? Have we made it official today? I think at least for today. I like it. I like Now Streaming Disney Plus. It sounds right. All right. I think I think that's the name for now. So that's the name of the segment that we are doing there. And my co-host Andrea is back. Uh, tell everybody where they can find you online real quickly. And then we're going to roll into some quick news. Sounds good. I'm Andrea Updike. You can find me at Andrea Updike or at Theme Park Parents on social media. Or visit my website, just is a four letter word dot com or theme park parents dot com. All right. All right. So Andrea and I, uh, in case you missed it last week, we decided to come together and start talking Disney Plus on a weekly basis. This has developed <laughs> as, as things tend to do when you get people like Andrea and I together on the same wavelength. And we're thinking that this is actually going to turn into its own standalone show about Disney Plus. For now, because we're both going through back to school, D23 Expo coming up, like there's all kinds of craziness going on in our lives. We think we're not going to kick that off officially until, what, what do we say, September maybe? Yeah. So we're, like, we're looking at like time. September. Yeah, we're, we're, we got a little bit of time before we actually move it off of this podcast. But we'll let you know when that's happening so you can go find it if you would like to keep up to date on all the Disney Plus news. But speaking of Disney Plus news, uh, we actually have a whole segment where we're talking about all the new stuff that we're excited about coming up here in, in just a minute. But there was some news that broke this week that yeah. Andrew and I wanted. To, yeah, we wanted to talk about it real quickly before we rolled into that new segment. So. Andrea, what happened? Well, last week we mentioned that Disney Plus is going to be around $7 a month and also available as a Hulu add-on. And since then, we found out that you can actually get a bundle now. You can purchase Hulu with Disney Plus and ESPN for $12.99 a month, which I believe is cheaper than just Hulu alone. So they really gave us a deal. Uh, yeah. Well, if you get Hulu alone with the ads, I think it's like five ninety nine a month. But it's it's if you do Hulu, like you can do Hulu Live. So you can also get like more live stuff. Like if you really want to cut the cable cord and just go with Hulu, they offer like live channels. Without too. the ads. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, without the ads. And that one gets more expensive and blah, blah, blah. But it's, it's a fairly good deal considering that it's the ESPN uh, channels mm -hmm. uh, plus Hulu plus all this new Disney content that we're getting, I think twelve ninety nine is a decent starter deal to, to get you started to see what you use or what you don't mm -hmm. use. I mean, my, my first thought was we have Hulu that I probably would have canceled and now I might as well keep. Right. And I don't know that it will work out to be a better deal for us because I don't know that we would have ESPN or have a need for it. Um, so it might still be the better deal if we're getting the lower option on Hulu plus the $7 mm -hmm. standalone, but we'll have to do that math. It's it's nice to have options. Exactly. Everybody likes options. Yeah. Um, this information came out during the Walt Disney Company's quarterly financial uh, results conference call. I think it was on uh, Tuesday, Tuesday, August 6th. Mm -hmm. And um, Bob Iger gave the investors all this information and a, a lot of it was related to Disney yeah. Plus. So we wanted to put that in there. The big thing was that the spindle is going to be an option. Uh, and I know a lot of people like that because they want to make one bill. They want to make one payment. They don't want to worry about nickel and diming like five different streaming services. Right. They'd rather just have, you know, one, one package. Um, it does get confusing when you've got all these different line items. And if you budget, I mean, we have a spreadsheet, we budget, we follow that kind of stuff. And it doesn't seem like much when you're adding on $5, $10 here and there, but they do add up after a while. They add up. They add up. Yeah. And so I, I think uh, this will help, you know, some families and other people. I, I saw a lot of people strongly say not interested in ESPN, not interested in Hulu, just want Disney Plus. Mm -hmm. And I think six ninety nine, you're going to be happy with that price point mm -hmm. as well. So yeah, so that was kind of cool. Uh, they also went on to give a little bit more information of the content that's going to be on there. All of the Disney studio films that were released this year will be on Disney Plus within the first year. My mental math means uh, Captain Marvel. Yep. Avengers Endgame, uh, Lion King, and Aladdin. I think those are the four that they're talking about will all be on within the first year of Disney+. Plus. Mm -hmm, so that's mm -hmm. also for those of us who loved all four of those movies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that works out for me. <laughs> sure. And I think they said, uh, and we might have mentioned this last week, but Captain Marvel is actually going to be the first 
uh, Marvel movie to go only to Disney plus. It's not making mm-hmm. any other stops, any other place. So if you want Captain Marvel on streaming, this is going to be the only place to get it. That's going to be it. That's going to be it. The other kind of big news that I think was unknown um, up until this point was that they said that they are going to launch in Disney plus is going to launch in two international markets on or around the launch date. Um, So if not right on, then soon after. They did not tell us which international market. Uh So sorry, Canada. We cannot answer that question for you just yet. And then others will come over the next two years. Um, I also saw something about, like, I guess Hulu is not international. And so there might be some some hangups with trying to make everything talk to each other in different languages, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, so I know that those were those were kind of like the big things that I pulled out of this. I do have a whole blog post, though, with some more details. If you guys want to hit that, I'll link that in show notes for you. Oh, and those of us going to D23 Expo. Oh, guess man. what we get to do, Andrea? Guess what we get to do? Guess what I get to do? Andrea? I don't want to know. I'm so jealous already. <laughs> Anybody that's going to be at D23 Expo is actually going to be able to sign up for Disney Plus. Awesome. We are going to, yeah, we're going to be some of the first people to get to sign up for it, which I think is a, 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 a nice perk and a lot of fun. So, so that's the news. That's the news that we got. We just wanted to share that with you. We are going to go ahead and roll on over into our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now that the news report is over and uh, let's talk about the original content and all the new stuff coming on Disney+. Plus. Let's do it. Welcome to the No Guilt Fangirls Podcast, where liking what you like is never a bad thing. Here's your host and head fangirl in charge, Patty Holiday. Hey y'all, welcome to the No Guilt Fangirls Podcast. I'm your host and head fangirl in charge, Patty Holiday. And this is the daily-ish fangirl episode called, well, <laughs> we don't know what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> we're still thinking on that title. Um, but basically we're talking about all things Disney Plus in this segment. And it still needs an official name. Andrea, any more thoughts on that? Anything that you've know. come up with? <laughs> I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of sitting on now streaming Disney Plus. It just feels good to me, but I'm not 100% yet, so open to more suggestions. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, you you heard that, guys. We we would love some more. Like some things that we threw out were Disney Plus Andrea and Patty, well, but we'd shorten it to Disney Plus AP. Get it? Get it? Um <laughs> so cute. I love so, it. So adorable. I can just picture like the logo, you know, with AP on there. The but annual anyway. pass holder. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which, by the way, you do not have to be an annual pass holder <laughs> to like Disney Plus. <laughs> <laughs> that might that might be confusing. Maybe, maybe we do have to shelve that one. <laughs> well. I don't know. We can hold on to it in our hearts. That's right. That's right. Uh, there's also now streaming Disney Plus. We're watching Disney Plus. Or I still, it just makes me laugh. What the Disney Plus? What uh, the Disney Plus? <laughs> Come on now. This is a family show, though, Patty. Where are, we, where are you taking us? I'm not taking you anywhere. I just think it's funny. I just like saying it. And if we're going to say it over and over again, like it has to amuse me. I'm sorry, but that's the way I work around here. It's the price we pay. <laughs> All right. So this title clearly is a work in progress, but we're going to talk about Disney Plus. And we talked about it last week. So if you missed that episode and you want to find out who we are, what we're doing, why we care about Disney Plus, go and take a quick listen to that and then come back. We'll be here. (laughs) We're not going anywhere. (laughs) Um, But we are talking about on this particular episode, uh, we are going to talk about all the new stuff that is coming to Disney Plus this fall. Now, Andrea is back with me, and she's the co-host for this segment. Andrea Updike, say hey. Remind everyone where they can find you online. Hey, everybody. Thanks for being back with us. You can find me at themeparkparents.com or just as a four letter word.com and on social media at Andrea Updike or at Theme Park Parents. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Theme Park Parents is a ton of fun. That's a great site. It is not just Disney, it's got all the theme park news that Andrea can get her hand on, <laughs> hands on that she's sharing over there. So be sure to go check that out. And there is a lot of it. So it's been a lot of fun trying to keep up with all the changes and exciting things coming along. Yeah, there was big universal news last week. Yeah, the new theme park is coming, which is going to be epic. 
if that's, you catch my drift. That's what they tell us. That's, <laughs> that's, that's literally all they told us. But that's all, that's all we got. But, you know, hey, it'll be well, fun to watch. It will be. It will be. Did you catch the, the petty little shade that they threw at Disney World in their announcement? <laughs> I, did. <laughs> I did. And I am just all about this rivalry. It makes it so much more fun. And I mean, both parks have amazing things to offer. And those Orlando folks are pretty lucky to be where they are because there's oh, tons going on. For sure, for sure. And, you know, to channel my inner Mora Rose, you watch Shit's Creek, don't you? Yes, yes. Yeah. So funny. When one of us shines, we all shine. So yes. I am all for bringing it. And I and I hope that Disney's like, oh, oh, I see you. I see you. Okay, well, look what we're going to pull out. Bam! And they come up with something even more epic than a universe. We shall see. We shall see. I wouldn't be mad. <laughs> Would not either. Would not either. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So today's topic. Today we are going to focus on Disney Plus and some of the new things that are coming out. Now, this is all the caveat to say most of the stuff we're going to talk about, we like we know the titles and we might know one or two people that are in it, but that's pretty much all the details that Disney Plus has put out just yet. Uh, This is being recorded before D23 Expo, and we expect, because it's already been announced, at D23 Expo, there's going to be a Disney Plus pavilion, which that's what they do with their big things. So Mm -hmm. they're they're signaling to us that this is going to be a big thing. There's also going to be a Disney Plus panel, and then multiple... Uh, shows are going to have their own smaller panels. So I I think all the news is going to come out fast and furious here in a couple of weeks. But for now, this is what we have. This is what we are initially excited about as far as the new offerings from Disney Plus, right? And they've already given us a healthy chunk here to bite off. I mean, we've got a lot of information here. And even though we won't have the shows for a few more months, or in some cases, not till next year, I feel like they did give us a pretty generous amount of, of programming. Oh, I'm they excited did. excited about it. Yeah, no, I I really am. And, and as much as I like all the old stuff, I don't know that that would have uh, convinced me to sign up as much as these new offerings that they are investing in and that they're putting out there. Um, that was the that was the kicker. That was the selling point for me was the new stuff. Absolutely. I mean, I think the Netflix originals have been so successful in the last couple of years that they really could not have come to the table without original stuff. Oh, for sure. And I mean, Amazon uh, Prime is doing the same thing. Uh, The Boys, it's crazy and insane, but it's actually kind of cool. And then also, of course, our boy, Jack Ryan. (laughs) Jack Ryan, yes. And season two is here or almost here. Almost here. I think it's almost here. Soon. I know there was an announcement recently about that, but I, I have to go in and dig because yeah, I am I, ready for that. I love that show. We That was a binge it for us. No, no, no question. We sat down and just like let it all come out because we love Jack Ryan. But anyway, anyway, point I know, not to get too far away from the Disney stuff, but wasn't it such a surprise to see uh, John Krasinski in that role? I mean, I never would have put him in that role, but he was so perfect for it. It, it was one of those things that just, you know, it was one of those reminders that, hello, they're actors. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is what but they do. So they aren't Jim, you know? I mean, he, that's not, he, that's who he was, obviously, in our hearts and will be for forever, ever, ever. However, he is actually a skilled actor and I can know. do more things than um, pick on Dwight all the time. So, yeah, no, I loved it. I, I agree with you. Like, it was, it was such a departure from what we had grown to love with him. Um, yep. So, anywho. All right, so here we are. And we can go from John are. Krasinski to Disney because he's married to Mary Poppins. And there's our transition. Boom. There you go. <laughs> All roads lead to Disney, guys. <laughs> That's right. Don't even try to argue with that one. It's Don't. just true. It, it is absolutely truth. All right. So quick reminder. Uh, when is Disney Plus coming to the public, Andrea? November 12th. You can right. get your hands on a lot of this programming on day one. And how much is it going to cost? It's going to be $7 a month to start. You can do it independently on its own app, or you can add it as a Hulu bundle. Yep, 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 yep. And we don't have options there. We don't have a lot of details on what that bundle means or anything just yet, but we'll, of course, keep you posted if we hear more about it. So, um, all right, so we're going to kick off, and I'm going to start just by giving a quick rundown on some of the Marvel offerings that are coming, mostly because Andrea and I are both big Marvel fangirls, and... Honestly, this was the this 
the way they did this was so smart and it answered mm-hmm. a lot of my questions and concerns about moving into phase four as a Marvel fangirl. Uh, for those that haven't heard some of my other Marvel uh, gushings and discussions, I am not a comic book reader and I am strictly an, an MCU Marvel fan. And so for the last 10 years, we have grown to love these particular characters. And they have just captured my imagination, captured my heart, everything. Well, in Endgame, a lot of those relationships ended. And mm-hmm. and they signaled and they straight up told us this is the end of this phase. That was called the... Um, the they actually came out and they said that was the end of the Infinity Saga. The, those 10, 11 years, I think it's actually 11 years, 11 years worth of mm-hmm. content were considered the Infinity Saga. And they wrapped it up and they closed it. And my small trepidation in marvel i trust i mean i really do <laughs> but but my small trepidation was as somebody who isn't into all of the comic books um and i really love robert downey jr and chris evans <laughs> will i miss them so much in the next phase that it's not going to connect to me well uh marvel being marvel which is also part of disney now they're they're like interconnected now is super smart about this and what they're doing is they have announced Phase four, and it's got a set of movies that are included in phase four, but also included in phase four are these uh, brand new Disney Plus exclusive shows. So, guys, if you are a Marvel Universe person, Marvel Cinematic Universe person, and you want to be inclusive and make sure that you are following all the Marvel movies in order, which, by the way, I got a blog post for that I'll throw out for you guys uh, in the show notes. But if you are if you are that person that is into all of that, you you kind of need to go ahead and sign up for Disney Plus because this is phase four. This is part of phase four. <laughs> they, yes. they're, 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 they're not dumb over there, okay? They are not right. dumb. They are the masters at getting the most out of your pocket <laughs> as possible. <laughs> and I also think this is kind of in response to some of the fan um, outcry, for lack of a better word, with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., not completely tying in i mean they've thrown a few little references over the years but i think fans myself included wanted a little bit more of a tie-in uh to the movies and especially with colson and everything Mm -hmm. i think you know coming out of the gate saying these are connected i think for me is kind of like oh okay good i don't have to have that question because i really wished as much as i love agents of shield as a standalone, I would have loved to see a lot, a little bit more crossover in there. You, you know, I, I'm on board with that too. It just they they started it like in the first season or two, and then they completely backed off it and shut that down and said, nope, we're not going to do any of that. None of the none of the standalone Marvel shows, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, none right. of them crossed over into the movies. And I know there was a reason for it. I just can't tell you what that is, right off the top of my head. But I know there was a reason yeah. for it. But I didn't agree with it. I wanted it still in there because I love Coulson. And I wanted to see Coulson in every... Exactly. Or, you know, and not even that we would need cameos, but just knowing that the story's like, where in the timeline is this? Yes. You know, where did that happen? Yes. Agreed. I totally, totally, totally agreed. So they're kind of, I don't know if they're making up for that mistake or they just evolved their thinking and this, right. is, where, this is where we're going now. So um, real quick, we're not going to go into too much detail on these because I think we could spend... 50 minutes just talking about (laughs) what we're excited about with Marvel. Maybe we'll do that another day, but um, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier is the first Disney Plus to come out, and that's not coming out till fall 2020. So we got a little bit of time before we yeah. are really going to get our Marvel uh, M- Marvel stuff. Um, there's also WandaVision, which is coming out mm-hmm. spring of 2021. Uh, Loki is coming out spring of 2021. What If which sounds like a really cool premise. This is I'm the first I'm excited about that one. Yeah, this is the first uh, animation that Marvel is doing as part of the MCU. So, it's going to be kind of cool. Yes, and the and the uh, the voiceovers will be the original characters too, yes. which I love. The That's, actors. Yes, that's going to like bring that tie in for fans like me to to mm-hmm. be hooked on this. Uh, that is coming summer of 2021 and uh, give a little synopsis of what that's supposed to be. Do you do you remember what that's supposed to be about? So yeah, so the What If series is our Marvel characters that we know and love, and they are taken into storylines of what if this had gone a s- different direction than what we did in the movies, so or what they have done in the comics, and it sort of like gives these characters an entirely new storyline, and it's not you know what really happened, but it will be a fun way to explore different 
uh, different storylines with these characters. One of them that they mentioned was, what if Peggy Carter got the super soldier serum instead of... Uh, Captain America instead of instead of Steve I love Rogers. That. So yeah, I mean that would. I be, want that story. Yeah, I want that story. Awesome. I totally want that story. So so that's coming uh, again that summer of 2021, and then the Hawkeye, uh, which has been announced, and it's going to be Hawkeye. It's going to have Kate Bishop in it, uh, yes. and that is uh, fall of 2021. So that's what we know as far as the Marvel stuff as to when it's coming specifically. There's also a. Marvel Hero Project, uh, which my understanding is kind of a, uh, is it is it heroes in regular life kind of thing? Like it's more like documentary type stories about people who do good in their communities. I don't know. I can't, I can't remember the exact details on that. Yeah, I need to learn more about that one. That one is, yeah, selfless acts of bravery and kindness. And Marvel is going to celebrate them for the superheroes that they are. So yeah, yep. I think it's going to be really cool. I, I guess that is a real, um, like a documentary type series. Yeah, so yeah. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Those, those are the kind of series, those really big feel good series that just they get to me. So I, I know, I know I'll be watching that one. Um, there's also Marvel 616, and that's a documentary series exploring the intersection between Marvel stories and the real world, which might also be kind of nerdy and cool. And I could totally see forcing my children to sit down to this. I keep trying to get my kids into STEM, and they keep telling me no. And I'm like, but. <laughs> <laughs> but the movies tell me STEM is where it's at. I can't you be Fitz and Simmons? <laughs> yeah, right. Like, don't you want to know about the nuclear cells and the way things all fit together in outer space? <laughs> yeah. Did I <laughs> did I say one division? I said one division. Right. You did say one division. Okay. I think I read somewhere that the timeline for that is actually going to be after Endgame. No. They're actually making that one kind of a retro thing. My understanding well, is that's it's, what I thought. Maybe I read something wrong because whenever I read confused me because I was like, well, wait a minute. It can't be that can't be the right timing. Well, it could. But we you know we we were introduced to the multiverse. Right. And so yeah. well, that might true. be who who knows what Marvel is doing to us and where they're taking <laughs> us. I'm just along for the ride. And I'm excited because I love Scarlet Witch. I think she's a great character. And she's yeah. so powerful. And she had Thanos, man. She had him. Oh, uh, <laughs> he cheated. Well, don't even get me started on the whole how many times they could have killed Thanos. I don't even... I can't go there. <laughs> like... All right, for another show, for another show. That's for uh, another show. All right, so that's the quick Marvel wrap-up there. Obviously, as you can tell by the excitement in our voices, we are super <laughs> excited about all of those. And that is worth me paying out the $7 a month for two to oh, three yeah. years alone. I'm there. You got me, Disney. Um, so, yeah, so that there's that. What else are you looking at that, that you are interested in? Yeah, and just, just real quick to add to the Disney math here, if these were – going to be theatrical releases that would probably be what 50 to 100 dollars for a visit to the movies and you're getting it for seven dollars so look at you you disney math disney math i yes yes <laughs> i i so, see i see no fault in this logic bring it to my tv break just bring it right to my living room i'll pop my own popcorn we'll have a good time <laughs> numbers don't lie i mean <laughs> they don't lie you do the math and it's so clear all right so yeah. what what else are you interested in what what else has you excited outside of the marvel stuff so for the Marvel stuff, I'm really super into Loki. Always one of my favorite characters. Very much looking forward to that show. I am excited to see him, like we discussed last week, kind of in that more villain mindset. And um, I just want to see where the timeline takes us. I don't know how they're going to do or if they're going to be doing like cameos with some of the other characters. I would imagine they will. And they're just not telling us. I'm hoping for it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um but I think that's going to be really fun. And then not really Marvel, but maybe this is a good segue into another category. I'm super excited for the documentaries coming to Disney+. Plus. And one of the top of my list, as you may know, Marvel alum, Around the World with Jeff Goldblum. Sounds amazing. It does. And there's actually at uh, D23 Expo, he's going to have a, a panel. And I'm like, ah, oh. Jeff Goldblum. I'm going to go watch Jeff. Uh, he's, I'm he, so excited. I, yeah, I actually, I got to I, I got to meet him super briefly. He made fun of me. And that's how I met Jeff Goldblum. And it was adorable. <gasps> um, <laughs> that, everyone should have a Jeff Goldblum 
like encounter. Ab- think- absolutely, absolutely. I heard somebody describe him as doesn't matter who else is in the room, Jeff Goldblum will always be the most interesting person in the room. And I felt that. So 100%. That, yeah, when I was at this, this whole situation happened at Thor Ragnarok press conference. And it was the big press mm-hmm. conference with all the characters up there. So you think about it. I mean, you know, Chris Hemsworth was up there, Kate Blanchett was up there, Mark oh, Ruffalo man. was up there, and Jeff Goldblum. And you, he didn't even say a whole lot, but there was just something about this guy. You couldn't. You couldn't take your eyes off of Jeff Goldblum. It's crazy. Right? It's, it's you, the smirk. It's like he's mischi- mischievous. Everything on his face makes you think something is going on in his mind right now. And it's not anything I could make up. It, it's only in his mind. And you're like, what is he thinking? He always just looks like he's scheming. I oh, love it. Yeah, it was it, it was it was cool. It was cool. And anyway, we it, in the hallway we had a chance where as the actors walked by, you could approach them and and talk to them for a second or ask them for a selfie. And so I was trying to get Mark Ruffalo's attention, and I was very timid because it was the first time I had done that and I, and I was like, "Mark, Mark, excuse me." And he didn't hear me <laughs> or he ignored me. Oh, whatever the answer. Um and he kept walking. <laughs> but behind me, I hear somebody going, "Mark, Mark." Oh. Uh- <laughs> And it was Jeff Goldblum. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I was like, Mr. Goldblum. He just he just laughed. He put his hand on my shoulder. And I was like, do you mind if I get a picture? He was like, no, not at all. And he's so tall. And he, like, bent down for my picture. Anyway, so I have a little cute selfie with Jeff Goldblum. Maybe. Oh, I love it. You'll have to you'll have to show us that. I will. I will. I'll put, link I'll put to that, it somewhere. I will. I'll put that in the blog post attached to this show. But, yeah, he's... Uh, he was, he's a lot of fun. He was, he was cool. But anyway, so yes, Jeff Goldblum, we totally went on this Jeff Goldblum tangent. (laughs) Well, and you've just described why everyone is going to love this documentary because he is going to make the perfect host. Like, I don't understand how this is the first time we're seeing a show from him of this nature. Like, well, he's been busy. It sounds perfect. Well, (laughs) I know, but I mean, he's like, I never even considered, oh, Jeff Bol- Goldblum should have a show. But now that it's here, or it will be here, I'm like, this is perfect. I can't imagine anyone else hosting this show. And so what it is, is he's going to be just seeing how things work. Um, how are things connected, like ice cream or, you know, science, history, and and exploring the connections between different things and in a really interesting and entertaining way. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And my family really enjoys documentaries in general. Yeah. Yeah. But of course the entertaining ones are a lot more fun. You know, I think it'll be perfect. That is going to be the perfect show for my boys and for all of us to watch together. Yeah. I I think it sounds great. I, 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 I'm not a super big, heavy documentary person, but if it's the right host, if it's the right storyline, then yeah, I get into it. You know the sciencey show where they would like how things are made or whatever. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? That one. I yes. I used to love that one. <laughs> I used to, anyway. Like the crayon factory. Like, do you remember that from Sesame Street yes. growing up? They would go in the crayon factory. That was mesmerizing. And you couldn't take your eyes off of it. Just watch them on the conveyor it. belt. Yeah, <laughs> I love crazy. that guy. That's, all that's all right. Stuff. So we've got Jeff uh, Jeff Goldblum coming. Um, another in in the uh, documentary side point. You also pointed out. That there was, uh, what's the one that I'm thinking of? Oh, the Imagineer one. We are we talked a little bit about yes. that previously. There's a Disney Imagineer one. Now, what's so cool about these guys is you got to remember, this is Disney's channel, and they are mm-hmm. going to give us a little bit of peek behind their own curtains. So there's going to be this Disney Imagineering documentary. There's also going to be an Animal Kingdom documentary. Mm-hmm. And what is the one? Ink and Paint? Ink and Paint. Yes, Ink and Paint, which I'm really excited about because it's not only about Walt Disney movie making and the animation and all of that. But it's it's actually talking about how women helped create these animations and these beautiful images and all these colors. Um, I think it's going to be really, really interesting. And, and I'm just fascinated by animation in general and how much work goes into it and how much work went into it before they had all the digital tools oh, that we have now. For sure, for sure, yeah. There, there's also going to be um, there's going to be a documentary well timed for the making of Frozen Two, which if you and I'm assuming that's going to come out yeah. like you know right around the, when the movie comes out, which is going to be right. at the end of November. So that's when I'm guessing that's going to be out there. So there's a lot of like great documentaries, not just fluffy fun things, even though we're mm-hmm. totally down for that. Um, but there's also a lot of really great documentary stuff that's coming out as well. Let's let's talk about some 
of the movies. I know there's one movie in particular that I'm excited about that they have announced. (laughs) That's the Lady and the Tramp live action. And I know people are like, you're either of the opinion that you hate all these live actions or you love them. I am of the opinion of I love them. Uh, For the most part, I love them. There's very few that I have hated. In -hmm. fact... I can't even think of one that I hated. There's just, there's ones that I like more than others, okay? Sure. So what I like about Lady and the Tramp is that it is going to have some CGI animals, but for the most part, it's real live animals. They are using the dogs. They are using them in coinciding with the actors, and that's live action to me, right? Where, you know, no offense, John Favreau, but I didn't see the <laughs> live action in in The Lion King. I just the didn't, Lion King. It didn't strike it to, for me, but this does. And so I am excited to see what they do there. In this movie also is Yvette Nicole Brown, who I think is one of the loveliest, most underrated performers. Like, people, don't sleep on Yvette. Go watch everything she's ever done from a community. If you can get your hands on The Mayor, oh, she was, yes. it was only one season, but she was great in The Mayor. But she is just, she's hilarious. And I cannot wait to see what she does yes, in Lady and the Tramp. Looking at the list of uh, actors on this, I mean, they've got a star studded team of, mm-hmm, of people doing mm-hmm. these voices tessa thompson justin thoreau yep you've got sam elliott as trusty which is perfect casting i cannot wait to hear perfect him as trusty. right right um janelle monet all all these different people so i'm excited about that and i didn't realize i had heard about the production of a live action lady and the tramp i did not realize it was going straight to disney plus so i'm actually really looking forward to it you know, as a standalone. Yeah, I, I don't know if it would have done well in the theaters, but I like that they're they're putting it out and it should be available day one is my understanding. I like that it, um, they're putting it out. I'm assuming they're also going to have the, the older animated version available on in the vault section. Which is a classic. I love that movie. And I, I just, really do it. I kind of love that, that opportunity to, to see both. Right. So, yes. yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so that, that's, that's my biggest movie that I'm interested in. What movie are you interested in? So that one definitely looks like fun. I know my family is going to be super excited to see Phineas and Ferb mm-hmm. in a new movie. Um, that one is currently is Phineas and Ferb movie, but that title may change. I'm also really looking forward to one called Noel which is a Christmas movie with Bill Hader and Anna Kendrick. Oh, I love Anna Uh, Kendrick. (laughs) I do too. Well, yeah, we all know you do. (laughs) Pitch perfect, girl. But, you know, I... I have to admit, and this is not a Disney Plus thing, but we started watching Barry earlier this year, which is another... It's just an HBO show. Totally not kid-friendly. But only knowing Bill Hader from his Saturday Night Live days, I really didn't realize what a fun actor he is really looking forward to seeing him he is an ec- well yeah he's an excellent actor i mean he's he's funny and and i think almost everything i've seen almost everything i've seen him in has been on the comedy level but mm-hmm. yeah he's he's a he's a good actor surprise surprise like <laughs> um, right. i mean it's hard to know from saturday night live because they have a, a certain you know shtick and and it's hard to break out of that if you are only seen in one way. So I'm excited to see him doing different things. Yeah, yeah, me too. And then the last thing that I want to say that I'm super excited about, which I don't think I've, I don't think I've fangirled this enough yet. I I probably need to remedy that. (laughs) But um, the other, the other day I was wearing a shirt and my, my husband looked at me and goes, oh, is that Luke Skywalker? And I was like, psh. Like Skywalker, <laughs> whatever. It's Troy Bolton. And he was like, oh, his eyes rolled so far in the back of his head because, uh. yes, <laughs> I am a 40 something year old woman, a 40 something year old woman who still wears a Troy Bolton t shirt because Wildcats. Oh, together. You know it. You know it. High school musical. Uh, yeah, no, I am all about high school musical and I. I'm obsessed with the series. I have watched all the movies so many times. That is like, if it's on TV and I happen to come across it, uh, my family knows there is no choice. Yep. This is where mom is stopping and we are going to watch High School Musical together. Uh, I just... <laughs> That's hilarious. I just adore it. I adore it. And uh, yes, I adore Zac Efron's. But I also really just adore the idea behind, uh, you know, what they were doing and, and some, of those, some of the stories they teach. So High School Musical, the musical... That is the title, y'all. That is the title. High School Musical, the musical, uh, is coming out as a series. And 
I, I'm gonna. There's gonna be some more about this coming out at D23 Expo. I'm hoping mm-hmm. I can fit it into my schedule. I think there's some conflicts I may not be able to, but um, I'm hoping to to catch some information about High School Musical and the musical while I'm there. And that is definitely on my list. So that's like that's probably the last of the must sees for me. Yeah. That uh, off the top that I you know just kind of scrolling through the list and, and coming up with. Is there anything else that's a must see for you? Well, you did mention uh, Luke Skywalker, and we'd be remiss not to mention some of the Star Wars stuff that's coming out. I am such a bad Star Wars fan. See how much I gush over Marvel, and I'm like, oh yeah, I love Star Wars too. (laughs) Well, the thing is, the Marvel movies have come out so fast and furious, it's been easy to keep our attention. Star Wars films have taken a little bit longer between films, and so it does take some of these... um, some of these television shows to kind of keep it going. And especially with my kids, they're kind of like out of sight, out of mind. And we actually just started rewatching the star Wars movies in preparation for the last one coming in December. And so they're getting a little bit more ramped up. I'm like, you guys, because they're like, I'm more of a Marvel person. I'm not so much a Star Wars person. I'm like, yes, you are. You just forgot. So like, we're getting back into it. And so Disney Plus is going to have a couple of original shows. The Mandalorian is the the star of the show, I would say. Mm -hmm, Uh, It's mm going to be a live action Star Wars series. And it's just got a massive uh, fan base already. And that is going to be really, really interesting, fun. They've got a huge cast. I'm looking forward to seeing that one. And then they also have a series coming out that's not titled yet, but it's going to be based on the life of Cassian Andor, which if you've seen Rogue One, um, he is sort of the one of the main characters who is the one who actually built it built the failsafe into the death star gosh mm-hmm. I, did, I had a hard time saying that but anyway it, i think that's going to be a really interesting one and diego luna will actually be back in that role um, which i like i like continuity i'm a big fan of continuity so whenever they can tie things together like that i'm a fan yeah no definitely i i think uh, you know for me, I guess it's one of those things where I'm like, Star Wars is is always there and it will always be in my heart. But I think you nailed it where it's just they've been giving us so much Marvel over the, the recent years consistently that it's mm-hmm. just kind of got my attention. Yep. <laughs> it's completely it got does. my attention. So, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I So, you know, that being said, there is so much great new stuff coming to Disney+. Plus. I'm going to go there, Andrea. What is the one show that we both agree on that we're not interested in? <gasps> we're going to say it? We're going to say it. Oh, no. We're going to say it. There's one show. Oh. There's one show, and Andrea's like, I'll fight you. I'll fight you over this, but I'm not interested in it. And I'm like, girl, same. I'm not interested either. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I have to say it out loud. I care nothing about Forky asks a question. As much as I love Tony Hale, I just did not connect with Forky in Toy Story 4. I have a whole post about it. Um, <laughs> this series, I think I think the kids will love it, and that's great. I think my personal family, are we have aged out a little bit of this particular category, but that one for me just isn't doing it. I, I think I think my youngest, I think my Lucy, is going to adore it because she really liked Forky. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. It's just not high on my list. But I do adore Tony Hale. So I'm willing to give it a shot. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to see how it yeah. goes. Uh, but it was just funny that we both were, <laughs> we were both thinking we're the same thing. Just looking at the list, we're like, nope. <laughs> Out of this entire huge list of content that's coming, we both picked on, focused on the same one that we were like, eh, no. <laughs> I know. I know. It's, it's just one of those things. You either love, you either, Toy Story 4 was a lot more polarizing than I anticipated. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been, it's been very fascinating to see where people fall um, in their opinions about, about the movie and the new characters and everything. Oh, hey, I'll give it a chance. I'll watch it. We'll come back to it. We'll, We'll, We'll circle back. We'll circle back. We may change our mind and be like, it's our favorite ever. Yeah. Yep. And now you'll have it, you know, recorded for posterity. <laughs> That's right. We were haters. We were haters. <laughs> Sorry, Forky. Uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. All right. Well, we're going to wrap this up. Um, we are going to come back what next week and talk about the old stuff, the stuff that's coming out of the vault. And yeah, <clears throat> there is a list for that. And I and I'll put this in show notes. But there's a list for that that they have told us what they know for sure is coming so far. <laughs> you will find things that says everything is coming. 
But sometimes we like to look at an actual list of what is coming Mm -hmm. and talk about that. And that that I do I do have what's been announced thus far. So I'm going to go ahead and put that up in the show notes for you to check out. But then we'll come back to that and talk about what we're interested in, what we're not interested. Like, for an example, Andrea has strong opinions on a much beloved movie, The Apple Dumpling Uh Gang. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) Yeah. I, so no, hold hold it, hold it. We're, I'll hold it. I'll hold it. <laughs> we got we got to leave them. You know, we got to keep leave them wanting more. Okay. Yep. So. Yep. You're gonna hear about that. <laughs> That's the teaser for next week. We will we will cover something about the uh, apple dumpling gang there because Andrea has got a story there. Uh, and uh, I think that's it for today, though. Uh, thanks for listening to the Dailyish Fangirl today. This was a Disney Plus now streaming or now streaming Disney Plus or uh, we don't know we're still looking for what that the Disney Plus it's so- all about Disney Plus I, we don't you know <laughs> yeah I I don't know what we're gonna call this but I hope by the time we talk next we will ha- we will have that answer that's that's oh, our that's right that's our goal this is the working title working title right we're we're on the disney plus schedule here so you know tbd that's right that's right we're trying to trying to nail it down and eventually we we think both of us are are of the opinion that we're probably going to move this content to its own show and we'll let you know you know what when that's going to happen and what that what that is so um just fyi that's what we're thinking is that it's probably going to become its own show not part of no guilt fangirl but for now it's a segment it's a segment and it's going to come out here we are it's going to come out every friday morning so you have something to listen to and think about disney plus wise while you're getting prepared to watch whatever you're going to watch over the weekend with your family something like that awesome <laughs> Yeah. All right. All right. So uh, leave us a comment on noguiltfangirl.com or themeparkparents.com. That's where you can find the both of us. And let us know if you have any great suggestions for a a name for the show. Uh, We will be back next week, like we mentioned, probably Friday morning. So look for that in your podcast app of choice. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Leave those reviews and five-star ratings. And we will see you next week on the No Guilt Fangirls podcast. Thanks, Andrea. Thanks a lot. Bye, guys.